Blessings. Blessings. Yeah. yeah, man. Good to good to sit with you. I'm I'm a new fan. Respect. Coffee. I'm I'm. Uh, Toast really put me on, you know. Blessings. And I didn't really know much about you before that, but when I heard the tune, it caught me straight away. Thank you. And. I listened to the lyrics, I said, yeah, I'm like, who is this? <laughs> I like, I like yeah. the flow, I liked how different it was, so life must have changed since that track, tell me. Uh, I would say life began to change after my first single burning, because this has all been so rapid for me. Mm -hmm. I've been in the industry for just around about 18 months right. since my first song, so since that, Ragamuffin, the second single, being on BBC One Extra with Kranix, um being on stage with Coco T and Protege and then Kranix again, it's just been like all a ball rolling. So Toast is just like icing on the cake at this point mm. in time, man. Just keeps on going. When I, when, I, when I found Toast, I followed you, obviously, on all the socials, um, Instagram particularly, and I noticed that you were very, well, you were expressing gratitude yeah. for the love that you know, people were showing you. Definitely. Big part of your life, I get. I take definitely, it, yeah? Definitely, definitely. Uh, why is it? Why is it? What makes you so humble? I think it's the way I was raised. Mm. My mum is that way. And, you know, I was raised as... She was a single parent. Mm. So, it's like, most of my influence, most of... All of her influence, that does overtake me. Just, yeah, just kind of came down. <laughs> so, no, no, mummy's always been a grateful person. She's always taught me to be very grateful, polite, mannerable. Just things like, things like, things like, you know, mm. mommy teacher from day one. Of course. So yeah. what was coffee yeah. like before toast, before burning? Um, not much different from, no, the mm. only thing that's different now is probably my schedule, mm. the places that I'm at. Um, but I've always been a humble person, like simple, easy to talk to, I like to think. Um, mm. On the quieter side, so I'm not very, very, very social. Mm -hmm. um, not too many friends, like a huge circle, but yeah, I haven't changed much. I haven't changed much. Let's get into the music then. Let's get into the journey, because like I said, Toast pretty much explains it. Yeah. Um, third problem is that not yeah. like was it Was it like that? It's definitely, it was like that. It was like that. So, I, like, I, went to, I was raised in the church by mommy, so in the Adventist church, so there was a lot of singing around me, harmonies. Um, so the love for music began there. I remember being in high school. I remember being uh, before that, about five years old, and deciding that I wanted to be a singer. Mm. And then between that age and about 14 years old, I just never thought about it much. And I, when I was 14 in third form, that's grade nine, mm. actually started tuning into reggae music and listening to the Chronics, the Protege, the Sizzler, and they said, like, listen around, and I fell in love with the flow, the, the, the lyrics, like, I've always loved music, and... The way how some of the man them deliver and even mm. some of the lady them like Janine deliver and stuff is like it amazed me and say, you know, I think I don't want to try this and I love music from a long time so I decided, let me try a thing lit like literally <laughs> me I say yo let me try a thing. I started writing lyrics, developing the craft like I write. I started writing more longer, longer um, pieces, mm. you know, longer rhyme scheme, just hold the whole rhyme and just different thing I develop and. When I was about 16, no, when I was 17 and I left high school, I didn't get accepted into sixth form. That's the grade 12 and 13 yeah. after high school, in, mm. which is optional. But, you know, I opted for that and I didn't get through. So it's like at that moment I decided that, yeah, it's going to be music. Mm. And I wrote my first song, Burning. Burning is actually, it speaks about my not being accepted into sixth form because it's like me, I say, me come with a fire. So it's like, no matter what, when we say nothing can't out my flame, that's what I was talking about. Mm. So it's like me, I say, you can not accept me here, but you you can't, like you can't, it's, I'm, I'm a flame, but you can't do this, and mm. crush me, I'm still, if I'm not going to burn here, I'm going to burn somewhere else. So mm. it's like me, I say, the city burning down, because I grew up in Spanish town, which yeah. is like a little, a little town, like a, a small town, but Kingston is a city, and that's where I went to school, so mm. I'm say the city burning down, I literally, that me I talk about, and stuff like that, and we just come with the fire, and... Mm. Bliss. Come forward to this point, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Your name? Yeah. I hear so you like the drink. Is that is it as simple as that's how you got it? Or I hardly drink coffee. Yeah, I barely drink coffee to be honest. Mm. But I remember drinking coffee one day at school in grade seven and one of my classmates saw me doing that and just decided that my name is gonna be coffee. <laughs> yeah, and it was just coffee like it was a C though. It was just yeah. coffee like throughout yeah. high school and then when I started doing music I decided to change the C to a K. Because there's a K in mm. my original name. Okay, okay like yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You've um, 
you touched on it before, but you grew up in Spanish town. Yeah. Talk about life there, because what we hear about Spanish town as outsiders, yeah. sometimes it's just a total, totally away from the truth in terms yeah, of yeah, what yeah. it's like living there. Talk to me. Um, what, what was your childhood like? What was coffee there? Goodness, hmm. badness? No, like, all right, well, based on the fact that it was just mummy, mm. and it was basically just me, because all my siblings were already grown by the time I was being raised. So it's like, me and mummy in the household, she would protect me with all her life, and she raised me as a simple as a simple child. I never asked for much, I never, like, had too much, you know what I mean? I was pretty calm, and... Um, I never went out a lot, so mm-hmm. I never, yeah, I wasn't on, on the streets or anything. I was just basically like at home, and then when I went to high school in Kingston, it was like 4 a.m. I leave the house at like 5 to get to school in the morning, and then I get home at like 6, 7, so it was just like home and then school for a minute, sometime church, and then outside of that, it was just really simple. The environment of Spanish town, the community is close, so it's like everybody know everybody for the most part, and you know of it everybody and then mm, in the surrounding areas they have a little violence here and there just like everywhere else yes. but it was never like I never noticed it was never in my face so I can't really speak too much on that but I knew of the like the bad areas and everything about Spanish town is a fairly balanced place just like anywhere else in in society mm. you know mm. yeah it's home for you yeah home for me your journey um you're young on your journey yeah, yeah. I mean, you're early on your journey, but you've had some some big cosigns already, man. You've performed in some big shows. Yeah. Talk about some of those that have left a mark on you, helped you to develop, and talk about some of the goals and targets you got that you can share with us. Um, definitely. When I before I wrote Burning, I wrote a tribute to Usain Bolt. That's is like is like a not really a song. It was like two. What I would call probably verses and mm. a chorus, and it was just two sixteens, two thirty. Yeah, mm. it was just a vibe. Mm-hmm. And then I posted myself singing that on Instagram and playing my guitar, and you seeing Bolt reposted that. Oh, nice. Yeah, so that basically attracted a lot of like people to my page, including different producers and mm. stuff, including the people who upset records who produced a track for Burning. So that was my first single. So you seeing Bolt definitely had an impact mm. on my career. Right after that. When I met Coco T, who's a legend, a reggae legend mm. from Jamaica, he introduced me to the Rebel Salute stage in January 2017 for the oh. very first time in Jamaica. Rebel Salute is a, he's a huge reggae show yeah, in Jamaica, yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah. definitely Coco T. After that, Chronix um, invited me to be a part of his BBC One Extra thing that, you know, the world seat now. So definitely Chronics. Protege introduced me to stage for the first time in the US, in Miami, when he had um, a show there. That was awesome as well. And Protege also reasoned with me and stuff. We were even working on a remix at a point. And mm. you know, we, we never really went through with it, but we're still working on something else even now. So mm. um, yeah, like different different things, but especially those people may have to really give thanks for because the, the most impact that I've seen came directly after those people really reach out for me and reach out to me and you know um, help me and give me opportunities so I have to give thanks to them for the most part <laughs> targets goals ambitions uh, places you'd really 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 like to play to tell you the truth um my goals and ambitions aren't very physical or tangible okay. um it's not about flying to this place or, you know, reaching this amount of views or this amount of listens or streams. It's more for me. I want the music to reach where it's supposed to reach because what I've begun to realize is that the inspirational music that I thought that I was writing has actually become just that and people have been tuning in and they might feel it in yeah. their heart and it's become, that's where the importance now lies for me rather than in physical, in I physical things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Talk yeah. a bit about that, your sound. It's not typical, is it? I mean, it's uh, it lends itself to a contemporary reggae that I don't know if much has been written about. It's not old school reggae. It's not dance or per se. It's uh, it's it's coffee. See there, yeah. respect. Um, I listen very widely. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I listen to rap. I listen to reggae. I listen to dancehall. I listen to R and B. I listen to. Grime, mm. yeah, like me, me just listen around and 
I think I've been told that I'm a fast learner, so what I believe happens based on experiences, every every like every piece of music that I listen to is some it, it's somewhere, Influencing. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when it's time for me to express and to deliver, all of them just spin together and just flow out. <laughs> like yeah, you're ready for yeah, it just right. comes out. Talking about grime, <laughs> it's funny. I saw do you know Chipmunk? No, the no, artist. no, Chip. But what? No, but what I've been realizing though, it, is he called Chip for short? Chip, yeah, Chip. Yeah, yeah I know yeah, Chip. Yeah. I know Chip. I yeah, know Chip. I, I know Chip. Really. I know Chip. He's, really, <laughs> I know Chip. he's not. He's not been Chip Monk for years. Sorry, Chip. Sorry. <laughs> um, is when he played it on his birthday. Like, yeah, he, yeah, did you see yeah, that? I saw the video yeah, yeah. on Instagram. That wasn't was good, man. That was love. Yeah, I thought, yeah, man. That, I appreciate I, that. Them time now, I'm thinking the tune's my tune, innit? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, no, yeah, I'm thinking, yeah. oh, he likes it too. <laughs> and even this last week, I saw, um, you know, Kida Kuz? Oh. He's a Nigerian artist. I saw him playing it as well. Like he was in his uh, Bible tent. I was saying, yeah, there's, oh, there's holy for people that this Yo. tune. Man, hey, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So, Yo, I have respect it's a good look, too. man. When I interviewed um, Protege last year, yeah. One of the most interesting things he said in the interview was that he found reggae music the hardest to do. To do? Yeah, he said like when he's obviously you have a billa tune, right? You have a billa track and all that. Yeah. Whether you write the lyrics first or get the beat or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Or sing over the instrumental or whatever. But he said he found reggae the hardest to do. What's difficult about the music process for you, if anything? Um, we can see what's easy. But what's difficult? If well, for me, you know, personally, I. All right, well, generally, mm. not everybody's going to like every genre of music or is going to connect with every mm. genre of music, and that's what it's going to be. So for me, I'm not, like, I, I wouldn't, I just I flow with what works for me. So what you've heard so far is basically my vibe, as you know, so I haven't faced any difficulties. Like, if I don't, like, if I'm not a vibe on a track or if I'm not a vibe in a situation or a, an environment, it's like I'm not going to yeah. struggle to stay there and struggle. So I haven't faced any difficulty that I can really attest to and speak mm. about right now. Okay. Think yeah, I think I've just been flowing with what I can, with what works for me. So mm. it's been good so far. That's ah, so a good process so far. Then Throne, talk about it. Yeah, Throne was. Um, That's a new single, right? Yeah, it mm. is. It's produced by Walsh Fire, mm. and I remember when Walsh sent me that beat. It's like the progress of the beat, like the maddest thing I had heard at that point, based on something given to me for me to write on. Yeah, okay. So it's like me. I say, what am I? Them time I'm just write ragamuffin, and I said, and if me write ragamuffin. And me hear this now, me have to go mash up this to me can be of soft <laughs> on this. So me I say, what am I gonna put on it? It's like me did a tackle with the rhythm and it feel like it a beat me up, you mm. know, and then me just get mad and say, No, me I beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, so I just like I just went off. That's yeah. it. Yeah, so you, that was you in your zone. You yeah, just, you just went in, in Amazon for two, like, yeah. yeah. Good look, good look. Well, I hope it does as well as everything else so far. If not, um, a lot better. Thank you. It's obvious you've got a love for the music. Yeah. Um, it would be remiss of me with Valentine's coming up, and I understand yeah. it's your birthday a couple yeah. of days after that. To ask you what else you love, really, so that I can home in on that. I love. I actually love my space. I like being by myself. I like, I love mommy. Mm. Yo, mommy love mommy gone to bed. I can't not love mommy. What the of hell? Course, of <laughs> course. I love mommy. Yeah. Um, I love Jamaica. I love my country. I love the culture. Mm. Good, bad, in between. Um, I love music. May I say it again? Mm. Just, just emphasize. And. Uh, Mm. You don't have to stress yourself. You're giving me a few loves there. Yeah. That, what yeah, are you going to be doing right. on Valentine's Day then? On Valentine's Day, I really hope to be... I hope to be joining Protégé at on his school tour All right, in yeah. Kingston. Big thing, yeah. Yeah, mm. in Kingston. That's mm. what I hope to be doing on that day. Too. Are you going to be I working? Yeah. Let them know. Tell yeah, them. Yeah, me I make them know. Say me I got to work. And <laughs> 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 the chicken we are jerk. <laughs> Listen, um, coffee has been a pleasure. Respect. I could sit and chat and chat and chat and chat, you know, but I don't want to overload the people there. I think this has been a great introductory um, interview. Thank you. Anything else you want to put on the radar or put out there before we're done? Um, Well, only that my debut EP will be released next month. So that's in February. You can expect it on February 8th. So look out for that. It's titled The Rapture. So you're 19. You're 19 in 19. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I'm a... 
I was born in 2000. You're a legit millennium baby. Yeah, so I can't forget my age. I'm just like, what year is it? Yeah, <laughs> that will never happen. Uh, keep track. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can forget it either. So it's like, even though I enter the industry, it's like, even though people know I'm young, you yeah. can't really struggle. You're just like, what year is it? Okay, yeah. coffee's 19 this year because it's 2019. And it's, and it's by track. Valentine's Day. Always going to know. See you there? See you there? All right, don't worry. <laughs> Listen, where can people find you? Um, You can definitely find me at Original Coffee. That's Original K-O-F-F-E-E on all social media handles. And on YouTube, it's Coffee Music. Not social media handles, social media. Mm. That's my handle. Blessings. <laughs> Good thanks, yeah? Blessings. All right.